Hello and welcome to Bookshelves and Beliefs, our AMA podcast style series that we're doing here from our office with our bookshelves and um, where people have asked us questions. Now, originally these came in from my original channel, which is now the Ohm Academy channel. But over there, Creepy Cupcake, asked, great name, asked, what does your personal practice look like on a daily basis? How do you balance spiritual mundane life? What are your favorite hobbies, shows, movies? Do you believe your spiritual practices strengthen your bond together? So many questions. <clears throat> so let's have, let's have a crack. Um, what does your personal practice look like on a daily basis, John? Um, I think one thing that I've really come to know and appreciate about the, the path of paganism that I am following is that my daily practice is integrated with my daily everything. Um, it's not a case that uh, I actually wrote a blog about being an everyday pagan um, on our um, Irish pagan school blog. Just Google it. You'll find it um, because it it's about shifting the mindset to live in spirituality and to make the spiritual mundane, you know, engaging on a daily basis. So, you know, I don't have a, a a format of ritual practice or specifics but i do have my habits and my my Excuse me i have built my habits to align with my spirituality so i shower every morning as a mental health habit and a physical cleanliness habit and so i found over the years that it was an easy moment to to align myself spiritually in that moment as well you know, to to focus my thoughts on cleansing, on letting stuff go, letting go of yesterday and beginning into a new day. Um, and so it's an integrated experience for me as I go every day. When I make a coffee, um, I, I make a coffee for the Dagda, which goes on his altar by the cauldron back there. Um, and it's living that spirituality. So it's not a case that, you know, I need to invest large amounts of effort and energy on a monthly basis or on a, a seasonal cycle or something like that. I'm trying to just engage for myself and the the promise that I made to the God and um, to say his name aloud every day. Um, and that's also where I wear T-shirts to remind me of that promise, too. Um, so that's kind of what it looks like to me. It's, it's, it's an integrated experience as I go around my day to day and just try and allow myself to be not just a physical being, a mental being, an emotional being, but also a spiritual being in snippets as I go. Um, for me, it's very similar where I I might have a little bit more of like an advanced kind of ritual structure yeah. than you, but that comes from very old habits. Of course, I've been doing this for coming on 30 years now. Um, and what I really found, especially say during times of stress, like when I had, you know, three young children under six and I was a single parent living on my own out in the middle of nowhere in County Roscommon. Um, times like that, you know, you have a lot of pressure on you and everything is quite demanding. So I, I kind of, you know, I bring it down to my minimum viable practice, basically, where like what is the smallest thing that I can do today to still check in? And sometimes that's lighting a candle. Sometimes it's doing some deep breathing exercises. Sometimes it's. Yeah, <laughs> I was going to get to that. <clears throat> sometimes it's, you know taking a walk with the kids and just taking a few minutes to appreciate nature. And um, so it really is. It doesn't matter what you're doing, but for me, the the most important thing has always been to do it consistently. And it's not that every single day is spiritual and um, because sometimes days are just days and, you know, there's just too you're too busy, you're too stressed, you just forget you're sick, whatever. That's fine. But what I do try is not to miss two days, you know, don't don't miss two days in a row. And I think that's good kind of habit stuff anyway. So it doesn't have to be big, as John said, it doesn't have to be, you know, a, a huge blowout once a month. It doesn't have to have all the bells and whistles. But it is nice to do stuff like that sometimes as well. And I find with my relationship and um, we actually have a blog uh, coming on uh, tomorrow. It's going live actually on our Irish Pagan dot school blog and um, so it'll be irishpagan.school forward slash right dash relationship. And the concept of right relationship is something that I really see as foundational and fundamental to all of my spiritual practices, whether it's relationship with deities, ancestors, the land, my own home, my my mundane relationships, my partners, my, you know, my my practical 
um, family stuff as well. Like, and the idea of right relationship is this reciprocity. It's based on reverence. It's based on respect. And it's making sure that that self-awareness is built in. So self-awareness is a huge part of my spirituality. And then when I'm coming in here in the office, um, you can see behind John there, it's there's a we moved and I didn't have an altar set up. I had like a little crow skull and that's where I was doing stuff. But um, the crow skull is still there. Um, my own stuff is there. Uh, a, a doll my na my mom knitted me <laughs> that has green hair that rep res represented me at the time I even have Maleficent on my altar because she represents a certain thing to me um, in my own personal spirituality and um, there's candles there's stones there's um, a stone my daughter found on the beach and picked up and gave to me you know there's it doesn't have to be big fancy tools that you spend a lot of money in the witchcraft shop to get you know that altar has really kind of grown very organically just as I've been here, just with the things that I want to use. And I've loads of stuff in boxes. I, I have loads of fancy stuff. Yeah, but it's it's creating sacred space um, <laughs> and holding sacred space for stuff that is sacred to you and your relationship that fits that core quiveness, that right relationship balance. So, you know, it it's a knitted kind of witch doll, but what it re represents is relationship with family and ancestry mm -hmm. you know it's um uh, a, a rose quartz candle but what that represents you know is it connected to nature and the in environment so just it, it is about how it works for ourselves and our own spaces when we find those spiritual moments and spiritual places or create them within our daily life i think that kind of answers the question how do we balance our spiritual and mundane life as well um i just want to like i also work very strongly with moon cycles um in my own personal spiritual practice john not so much but um i would do a lot more kind of magic and spells and you know prosperity stuff protection stuff and i find the moon cycles are very very useful for that um for alignment for energies for all of that stuff so again we have a class at the irish pagan school on the moon in irish tradition if you want to look at it from our perspective or you can just google moon, yeah. moon cycles and i'm sure you'll get fantastic in internet yeah. information <laughs> and uh, well you know, check your resources yeah, people be careful and um, we'd encourage you the reason why we started all of this is because there's so much misinformation out there that is straight up damaging and harmful um, so check your resources always. They don't have to be our resources. We have recommended resources, just, just but as long as you're checking yeah, your resources. Yeah. Um, and as for balancing the mundane and the spiritual, um, it's about kind of having that healthy relationship with yourself first. And I mean that by ego, because I've met many people who dive headlong into spiritual existence and forgo the self-care of the physical existence or the men or mental existence or the emotional existence. Um, and they they kind of put down or push aside the other aspects of what makes them a person, makes them human um, in favoring this pursuit of spirituality to an extreme. Um, and it's, it, it's not right relationship. It's, it's mm -hmm. a, it, you may be generating a lot of attention within your spiritual bond or spiritual connection to God's guides, guardians, whatever, but you're costing your relationship to yourself. You know, you're you're putting yourself not in harmony, not in balance. You're putting yourself last to self-harm in those ways by not looking after, you know, what it is that you need to exist as a mortal being within this existence. And we may have divine elements within us. We may have like that energy that lasts forever. But, you know, we are still finite. And so the only way to kind of make sure that that is kept going over the long term to have the longest and best impact we can have is by being balanced and it is that you know healthy sense of well you know okay i may be a spiritual person but my spirituality needs to align with the fact that i have to work a job and i have to kind of keep the roof over the head you know okay i need to make offerings to my gods but you know i also have to have enough food in myself to be able to function you know so it is about a healthy respect and affection for oneself and bringing that forward into your relationship with your spirituality going forward. Yeah. And the rest of that question then was the about um, what's your favorite movies? What's your favorite? <laughs> I think we have done another video on on favorite board games and stuff. So yeah. look up the bookshelves um, series there. Yeah, and you'll find more on that. Um, uh, yeah, it covers hobbies, all that kind of stuff. Yeah, but, um, I'm, I'm an absolute big nerd, massive nerd. Um, 
but shows and movies we haven't done. So what's your favorite TV show? The, uh, maybe, the, maybe, the we neurodivergent, maybe we should take that to a different conversation. The neurodivergent panic when... <laughs> you can't, you can't <laughs> ask me that. I can't just pick one. Okay. In what genre? In what spectrum? Okay. In what, we'll, like, do, we'll do a whole other thing <laughs> on, on favorite TVs and movies. But I do just want to say, um, because I think it's funny, when I was a kid, my top three favorite movies were The Color Purple, The Crow, and Tank Girl. And... For anybody who knows how I turned out, that's quite telling. I think that those were <laughs> quite no, no one was surprised. <laughs> those were quite influential. Yeah. Um, and the last aspect of that is asking about how our spirituality impacts our relationship. Um, we actually literally did another video about, you know, being a, a Morgan priest and a mm, dag the guy mm. and how that kind of works within our relationship. So definitely look that up if you're interested yeah. in more of so that. There's a whole playlist here. Um, it's it's a YouTube podcast. I'm not really sure how that's working, but it's definitely a playlist on YouTube. Yep. So um, so make sure that you subscribe, follow along. And if you want... Ask a question. Ask a question, absolutely. In the comments below, please ask questions because we're, we're working with like two-year-old questions here currently. So do ask questions. Yeah. Um, especially, you know, it's... The AMA stuff is supposed to be more like get to know us. So, um, you know, it's not, we're not, we're not going to be teaching on this one specifically. We do. I wear a size 10 shoe. <laughs> I'm five foot 11. I have massive curly dark hair. I come from a long line of bodies. What else do you want to know? Ask the question. You had a River Tam moment when you took that off. <laughs> Too much hair. <laughs> It's a symbol of my, no, it's not as that my hair is nothing got to do with my spirituality. So, um, so yeah. And also there is a link below to a year's worth of free resources. So please follow that link. It's irishpagan.school forward slash free. If you're listening to this on a podcast at some point, or if you're listening to it on YouTube, check the links below and go down through that and see what's actually taking your fancy. There's classes, there's ancestry work, there's, the three pillars of Irish paganism. There's uh, cheat sheets for the fire festivals, checklists for trustworthy sources. There's all sorts. There's also links to our blog, our podcast, and our YouTube and our TikTok. There's, there's so not we're on much. TikTok now. Yeah, there's so much now. Yeah. And um, it, it, the reason why we're doing this is not to center ourselves in any narrative, but it's to provide the thing that we always wanted. Mm. You know, yeah. when when we went looking for resources, we couldn't find them. When we went looking for native sources, we couldn't find them. And the frustration of having to deconstruct so much um, colonized, appropriated, like twisted misinformation was was grueling. So many invasive us. plants in our garden. It was so on. grueling for us. Um, and, you know, the frustration got to the point where eventually we just like, fuck it, we'll do it ourselves. So um, we we fenced so off our garden. And we weeded it out. We're doing and... really well. And like it's 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 a program and a process. And we want to invite as many people into, you know, accessing this resources for themselves and figuring it out for themselves. And that's why we give so much free content out there. But again, in being right relationship within ourselves, we need to make sure we keep the lights on and keep this going for a long time. And that's why we offer paid programs there as well. And to support um, our native teachers as well. Yeah, absolutely. It's not paid. just Laura and John here. Yeah. Like, you know, we have amazing kind of native teachers. We have staff, we have teachers. We yep. have Dr. Yeah. Gillian Kenny. There's actually a series on YouTube there. Um, fellow of Associate of Women's Studies in Trinity College. I'm actually so uh, enjoying so, the interviews. You, oh, you yeah. haven't seen that many of them as this is being released, but the, uh, we we have a whole series set up. Yeah. So um, it's they're they're really they're a lot of fun to do. Yeah. Very and fun. we're hoping to try and get some more native teachers and native aligned teachers to come on board. So uh, if if in fact you're if you're a native Irish person who's you know proficient and it's skilled in native Irish spirituality. And um, shoot us an email, mm -hmm. you know, or if you are watching this and you know of a native Irish teacher who you think would be a good fit for the Irish pagan school, shoot us an email. That doesn't have to be spirituality. We're also looking for folk culture, history, it, mythology, mythology, yeah, uh, craft, yeah, um, yeah, magic. So, yep, absolutely. But please keep it Irish. We're not looking for anything that's uh, not yeah, Irish. That, yeah. That's you know, there are so many other paths out there, and we do get contact with people. It's like, yeah, what about Scottish, like you know, paganism and Welsh paganism? It's like. Yeah, I'm Irish. <laughs> I'm not going to like, you know, step on anyone else's toes by trying to tell you about someone else's cultural and spirituality. We have a lane that's an island and <laughs> we, 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 stay within, within we stay within the borders. We have a natural border. <laughs> <laughs> right. So hopefully that ask, answers the question that was asked for us. And do make sure you ask another question. Anything you'd like to know about us, 
and you know we will do our best to answer mm-hmm. all right Dermot, it's Slán Gafal Slán <laughs>